And <clears throat> I started thinking about that because I was looking at this entry from <clears throat> September 2015 in which I tried to um, have a private investigator with a license and all of that who said he was a retired FBI agent, which I believe. I don't have any reason not to believe that. From I think he works out of Washington, Southern Washington. Um, I paid him, you know, I my I was able to get together enough money to pay this guy to do a security sweep, a professional security sweep, because I felt like that, you know, this is before I had a bug detector, and I felt like I needed something professional. At this time, I still trusted people like this enough to try stuff like this. Oh, my goodness, that was a long time ago. So it's now, we're talking about April 9th, 2019. Um, I would, to me, now to do something like this, I might as well just flush the money down the toilet. But anyhow, I paid I paid this professional private investigator to do a security sweep. So I say he used a device to detect radio transmitters and a red light device to look for cameras. What he brought in was a type of, I think it's called an oscilloscope. It was a box um, with a, you know, dials on it, you know, those... Um, I think it's called an oscilloscope. And um, he said it costs us all this thousands of dollars. And he didn't actually do like a bug sweep with any type of detection, like antenna you know, device to actually sweep over the walls or anything like that or check locations. He asked me about locations that I was concerned about, but he wasn't really able to fully check those locations. And I had told him ahead of time. So basically what happened, is I told him ahead of time, I was concerned about the overhead sprinklers and um at the time I wasn't really concerned about the light fixtures but I actually think um there are I think I actually think the cam the cameras that are in here there have to be cameras in here are in probably something to do with the TV entertainment center I think in light fixtures I think in sprinkler heads and probably something's in the smoke detector um so Um, I've found radio frequencies in one of the sprinkler heads really strong at one point, and then months later, I didn't find it like that, but it was very strong and consistent for a while in the one in the kitchen. Um, so anyhow, um, that's the kind of thing that I was most concerned about. Um, yeah, and then the entertainment center and things like that. You know, I knew, I knew where they would likely be if they were here, um, And so he, but he just brought in this one device that was, you know, um, had some dials on it and could, you know, he showed me at one point it detected a, um, frequency right in the middle, <laughs> which he said was a, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, well, those things that you put in babies' rooms, you know, where you put a transmitter in the baby room and then you have a, um, a receiver in another room. Okay. Anyhow, um. So he found nothing, and he used a, a red light device to look for camera lenses. Now, I later looked up more about that, and it sounds like those red light devices can be fooled by infrared, infrared things, but I do see something shiny in this, you know, when I look at this um, sprinkler from, especially if I sit, you know, directly behind it, I see some, a shiny surface in there. Um, but I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, so I say he found nothing, but much of his behavior makes me think he was not behaving in a completely honest manner. In fact, much of his behavior made it clear that he was not being entirely honest with me about what he knows. So I go through this list of what I found was a problem. <laughs> The date that he chose to do the sweep was 916. Okay, this was a situation where at first I was going to have him do it, and then I backed off. Um, I was kind of like, you know, the gang stalking was going on a lot back then, and I was, you know, being influenced by it, and something influenced me to back off of hiring him at first, which, of course, only gave him more time to work the backroom angles or, you know, for people to target him. And, you know, of course, I was under surveillance, so, you know, he didn't have to. I'm sure contact anyone. I'm sure they contacted him. Um, anyway, I rescheduled it with him again later. I decided I needed to do it. And then 
He scheduled it on 9-16 between 1 and 2 p.m. He said he had a meeting in Gresham, which he later said ran 45 minutes late. When I called him from for the second time, so when I called him to schedule the appointment, I was calling from the library. <laughs> I was thinking that I would avoid surveillance by calling from the library payphones, which of course isn't true. But um, he asked me to speak up while I was on the phone. So I feel like he knew I was being, you know, he knew I was being listened to and actually wanted me to speak up for that reason, or at least made me think that. Um, it could have been gaslighting even, you know. Um, Oh, I asked him, I don't know how I got up to this where I asked him, are you uncorruptible? He might have even kind of brought it up or something. And he just said, so I had read this book called Spy the Lie, which was supposedly by a couple of, you know, intelligence people who um, know how to spot liars and talked about something called cluster behaviors and sort of a lot of behaviors that people kind of um, in micro expressions and whatever, they're trying to avoid answering a direct question. So they do other things like deflect or hesitate or things like that. So um, I, if I asked, I said, are you uncorruptible? And he said, you should ask. And he said, you should ask me that. You could ask if I planted those devices. <clears throat> so it didn't even occur to me to ask if he had planted those devices. <laughs> um, and so maybe since he worked for the FBI, maybe he was giving me a hint about that, you know? Um, so my guess right here now, since, since, um, he said that, and I've been thinking about this, I think that, um, you know, government agencies have been surveilling me for this purpose. However, I think it's not just government agencies. I think other people have been doing it freelance as well. I think both of those things have been happening. And then maybe even people working for other governments, um, so there's been evidence that all of that kind of thing, I've, you know, I can think of evidence of each of those things having happened. So, um, that would make a lot of sense because then the people that were doing this freelance could be concerned about being found out by, you know, maybe the government, the government was doing it their own way, but they don't still don't want to become clean about it. And, you know, it's just craziness. But anyways, um, so then his next response was, I could lose my license if I planted devices. And then he says, I've been doing this work since 1983. Now, right there, that should have been, you know, a little hint for me, right? And probably was, because 1983 is when the Satyricon started and everything. So, yeah. And you don't work for this long if you're working for, quote, unquote, both sides. So what is, what's he saying? You know, oh, well, there's both sides. See, none of this stuff, I mean, even now I can barely grasp this because I certainly never grew up thinking I was in like some kind of spy war game, you know, where there's two sides at war. But apparently this is like what everybody around me thinks about all the time. Um, so when he says both sides, he doesn't mean like the good guys and the bad guys or, you know, um, the law and the the criminals. He means both sides of something else that I don't fully understand. Um, but, you know, obviously involves me. So whatever side he's working on, it's not my side. <laughs> but, but I still paid him $350 to work on my behalf, and he didn't. He took the money. So he tried to establish credibility without answering my question directly. That's, you know, something I learned in that book called Spy the Lie, which, by the way, I think was a very good book. I thought it was very helpful. Um, also, he indicated that he might not find anything. That was interesting, too. Yeah, he he sort of was like, okay, I don't want to get up your hopes, you know, that I'm going to find something if I come over, you know. Um, because he wasn't going to. Of course he wasn't going to. 
So, you know, I knew, I knew I was probably in trouble at that point, but you know, was, I had already decided to do it. And so I just went through with it. So I noticed that he coughed six times while he was watching the monitor on this oscilloscope device, scratched the left side of his head when he was discussing the results. So he looked to me like he saw something. Okay. Um, he had me, what he did is a, set up this machine in my kitchen. I have, you know, pretty small space. And then um, had me play some music from the other room and watched. He watched it. So I'm not sure what all that did. But uh, in any case, um, my feeling is he did find something. Even though he was trying not to. Um, when our first phone conversation, he indicated he could detect wired devices and devices inside of sprinklers, and I made it clear that sprinklers were a primary concern, he essentially refused to consider the sprinklers, said there was nothing in them, but wouldn't rule out the possibility of something in them. Yeah, confusing. Um, made a big deal of covering them as a fire hazard. Oh, because I had them covered at the time with paper cups so I had them covered with something that theoretically I thought would if they were ever um, activated would you know or you know wouldn't block them but you know I was very concerned about cameras I mean most people would be nobody wants to live with hidden cameras in their apartments you know what the heck that's but nobody will you know I've been trying for five years now to get really an answer about this and I can't do that you know and every time I try I put myself at risk of being declared delusional and all this stuff because these folks are not going to find these things it's not that they're not there it's not that there's I've got you know thank god I did get a bug detector eventually and could find yes there are wireless frequencies in my apartment very mysterious ones and at times very consistent ones and um so that's evidence, too. And I know I can't call the fire department because I know the fire department is involved in this, too. So that's they're not going to help. These, you know, sprinklers and things like that, that should be the fire department that takes care of that stuff. And the, and the um, smoke detector. If somebody's got a hidden camera in one of these things... That they should deal with it. And um, the problem is, I think, that this is a Freemasonry thing and that fire people and, you know, police are too linked up with Freemasonry. Because the Freemasonry, if you think about it, they use the I all the time in their logos and the G, which is part of, part of this game. So that's definitely, I think that's the problem with the fire departments and things like that, keeping us safe from, you know, hidden cameras, which we should be able to expect to be safe from hidden cameras in apartments and hotel rooms and public restrooms and things like that, locker rooms. So, um, anyway, I pulled the paper stuff off of the sprinklers, and by the way, and I left it off after this, but um, when I pulled the paper cone off the sprinkler in the kitchen, a piece of cat food fell out. So, I had not placed the cat food in the sprinkler, in that little cone on the sprinkler. So, that just meant that somebody had been in my apartment and done that as a little, you know, prank. And um, I mentioned it to him. I said, I didn't put that up there. And he didn't, he, act, he basically said he, you know, indicated he believed that I didn't put it up there. But see, had he been an excellent private investigator working on my behalf, he would come to the conclusion that that's further evidence that she's not delusional, that somebody did, you know. He knew I wasn't delusional. I mean, I'm not saying he diagnosed me as delusional or anything like that, but it's, but that's where you go if you if you press the issue with someone like this who who brings in their expensive instruments and takes your money and says there's nothing in there, but you know that that's still not true. And this is evidence that you know something else, something more than just normal things were going on. Um. So I know I remember it also. Okay, um, last week I write I had downloaded an image of Moybridge's cats, and somebody you know commandeered my computer and changed the title of it to Meyer Erica Resume. You know they switched a file name on it. It's just you know things like that make you know that there's things that are not normal going on. Um, so as Mike Hansen was leaving. He said he was sorry he couldn't find anything more definitive. He then placed his right hand into his pocket and jiggled his keys and change. 
So I know that my um, Multimedia 239 teacher had done the same thing when he was discussing T Governor Tom McCall. Governor McCall was governor when um, Chris was, I think, in high school. Yeah, like around 1970. So, um, you know, we're talking about something's going on and it's relating to, you know, the photographs and including photographs of us when we were children with no consent and obviously involving people like Governor Tom McCall, you know, and so it's just kind of like a reckoning a lot of people don't seem to want to come to. <laughs> anyway, um, so Mike Hansen, that, what that suggests to me is that he has a financial interest in not finding anything, probably more than financial, but yeah, definitely financial. It confirms for me that my suspicion, you know, that my suspicion is, um, or my suspicion that he is, in fact, corruptible, as most people in Portland are. So it's just, to them, it's not corruption. To them, they're playing a game of some sort, you know, and, and, and they don't see it as being corruption. I see it as corruption because I paid them to do a service or expect them to uphold an oath or, you know, things like that that they're not following through on. So to me, it's corruption. I think corruption is, is the correct way to see it but that's the mind control part of it because if it can be drawn it can, if it can if, if you can get people to see things like this as a game then somehow it somehow seems legit or something like that the reason why this came up just now though okay so um other than the fact that mike hansen kind of showed up in a dream but there's another reason for that, and it has to do with this guy, Robert Duncan, and his um, one of his acolytes, Tom Griffin. 